Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings viewers at home. Uh, welcome to our devotion. Um, we'll be looking at the scripture in John chapter 1 where we'll be talking about one of the disciples of Jesus Christ whose name is Philip. But before we do so, let us have a short word of prayer. Father, we thank you for giving us this moment where we go through your weight. We pray that you may bless us and that we'll be able to understand it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, when we read John chapter 1, we find that Philip is one of the first disciples that was called by Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was preaching and he was also baptizing people. And while he was baptizing people, um, in John chapter 1, he's in, in verse 29, he called the attention uh, from himself to Jesus Christ, pointing his disciples to Christ that he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And two of his disciples decided to follow Jesus Christ. Now we read in John chapter 1, and we start reading from verse 38. It says, Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? And then Jesus turns and says to them, Come and see. So they came and saw where Jesus dwelt. They abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. So one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, which was Simon's Peter's brother. Uh, he went to find Simon, um, his brother Simon. And then we read in verse 42, he says, And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of John, thou shalt be called Cephas. Now, when you read in verse 43, that is where now we find the introduction of Philip. The Bible says the following day, Jesus goes into Galilee. So while he was going into Galilee, he finds Philip and he says to Philip, follow me. So Philip is the first disciple to whom the command, follow me, was given. Now, as he finds him there, what happens when Philip follows Jesus Christ? Not only does he do that. But he also decides to go and look for his brother, whose name was Nathaniel. Philip was a seeker of truth. And the name Philip is someone who is very fond of horses. Philip was of Bethsaida, which was also the place where Andrew and Simon were staying. Bethsaida is a place where one of the blind men was healed by Jesus Christ. And this is a place where people had a very hard heart. It was very difficult for them to accept the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Philip went to find Nathaniel. Now Philip was someone whose faith was a bit trembling. Yet he was a sincere seeker. When he looks at Jesus Christ, the appearance of Christ at times was not appealing to a lot of people. And Philip was also like that. When we go to John chapter 6, we find that when Jesus Christ was performing a miracle where he fed 5,000 men, um, women and children were not mentioned there. Jesus Christ says to this guy in verse 5, of John chapter 6. The Bible says, When Jesus had lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? All his disciples were there, but he looks at, Simon, at Philip, of all the disciples that were there. He knows that this is a guy whose faith is still trembling. And he is saying this not because he doesn't know how he will feed the multitude, but he is testing the faith of Philip. Where can we buy bread that these people may eat? Now, 
when we take a look at the response of Philip, it says, And this he said to prove him, for himself knew what he would do. So Christ knew exactly how he was going to feed the 5,000 people that were there. Now, verse 7 says, Philip answered Jesus Christ, and he said to him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. Now, you also look at his response. He says, even if we have 200 worth of penny, it will not be enough to buy sufficient bread that all these people may not take much, but that they may take little to go with as they go home. So you can see from there that there is a lack of faith that Christ might not even be able to feed all these people that were there. So he says, the money that we have is not enough to buy bread that these people may carry just a little. What I love about Jesus Christ is that when he sees that we lack faith in him, he would put us into circumstances or situations where our faith will be tried and tested because he provides an opportunity for our faith to grow in him. And another thing, when we take a look at God and Jesus Christ, Christ does not ask us to believe in him without giving us sufficient evidence in which to base our faith. Now, we know what happened here. There was a young man there that had some loaves of bread and fish, and Christ performed a miracle. I would like to believe that the faith of Philip managed to grow because he saw that this man can do greater things than we can imagine on our own. And there's another text where we learn about Philip. And that text is found in John chapter 12. When we read John chapter 12, there are people who come to Jesus Christ. One thing I want us to note, when Christ says to Philip, come and follow me, Philip goes and finds Nathaniel in John chapter 1. Now, you would realize that he even knew where Nathaniel was because they were very close friends. They used to pray together. So he went to that place when Nathaniel was praying and he knew that he would find him right there. In John chapter 12, Greek men come to him and they want to see Jesus Christ. We read this in John chapter 12, the verse is 20. It says, there were certain Greeks among them that came to worship at the feast. So these Greeks are coming to worship at the feast. Now, the same came to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. So they came to him, they begged him and said, Sir, we are here to worship, but there is no way in which we can leave and go back to our places without speaking to Jesus Christ. So please help us. We would love to see the Jesus Christ. Now, when you read verse 22 of John 12, it says, Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went to Jesus Christ. So this is what we see once again. Philip does not take these Greeks straight to Jesus Christ, but it's as if he wants to find if this is something that he can be able to do. It's as if he wants to find permission from someone else, if it is the right thing for him to take these Greeks to Jesus Christ. Sometimes in life, we find people like Philip. People, when the gospel is preached unto them, they do not immediately make a decision. They look around to see who else is heeding to the message. If there are more people accepting this gospel that I'm hearing, then I myself would perhaps accept the gospel. But Christ here, what I love is that he becomes direct to Philip. He says to him, follow me. In John chapter 6, he speaks directly to him. 
Philip, where can we find bread or food that we can feed these people? When the message is preached, even when you are at church, an altar call is made. Do not look at who is raising their hand or standing up to accept the message. God is speaking directly to you, like he was speaking to Philip here. But he goes to Andrew, and then both of them now go to Jesus Christ. And this is what they say. Jesus, they said, Jesus says to them, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. He gives them the assurance that the hour now is coming, that he, Jesus Christ, will be glorified. There is another text again that we can read about this Philip, which also shows us that he was a man who would love to see things at times, even before believing. The last text we'll read about Philip is in John chapter 14. The verse is 7 to 9. In John chapter 14, we know that Christ has spoken to his disciples he told them that he would need to go to Jerusalem and be killed. He has mentioned to them a couple of times that he would resurrect on the third day. But when the days came closer, it looks like the disciples, their hearts were very sad. That is why Jesus Christ says to all of them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He tells them that, in his father's house, there are many men. Jesus is going there to prepare a place so that where they are, he can come and fetch them, that they may be there as well. Now, in verse 6, Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. For all of you to see God, you must come through me. And then in verse 7, he says something to the disciples. He says, if ye have known me, ye shall know my father also. If ye had known me, you would have known my father also. So the, the only way to know the father is for us to know Jesus Christ. He says, and from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. You know, one would say, maybe Jesus Christ was asking something very difficult from the disciples because they have only seen him. But he says that he who has seen me has seen the Father. Now, take a look at this. When Christ says, if you know me, you will know my Father, and you have seen him, Philip says in verse 8, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. As mentioned previously, Philip is someone who would want, his faith was trembling and would want something to happen in order for him to believe. Now he says, Christ, show us the Father. Then all will be fine. We will be sufficient that we have seen the Father. And Christ says to Philip, have I been long time with you? And yet thou hast not known me, Philip. He that had seen me, had seen the Father. How then do you say to me, show us the Father? I think for Christ to have walked with Philip and performed all those miracles for three and a half years, and yet Philip says to him, show us the Father. It means Philip was not probably paying so much attention to the character of Jesus Christ that he did not even see the Father in Christ Jesus. When we accept Jesus Christ. When we follow Jesus Christ, we see in him the character of God the Father because the two are one. Is there any of you at home watching this devotion? Maybe you have a trembling faith as well. Maybe you want to know more and you want to see God the Father. Once you walk with Jesus Christ, then you will see the character of God. Then the faith that is trembling when we walk with Jesus Christ would grow. There was nothing, Philip was one of the disciples, nothing so much that was wrong about him except that his faith was lacking. But Christ never denounced him. He continued walking with him and working with him so that his faith may grow. May God help us 
to have faith in Jesus and that our faith may grow, not only in Jesus, but in God the Father as well. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for these words. May they remain in our hearts. May we learn from the character of Philip that it is not enough to be in the presence of Jesus, but we need to believe in him as well. The miracles that he has performed and the ones that we believe he is able to perform. Help us, Father, that our faith may grow. In Christ Jesus we pray.